Welcome to Recap Diary. Here is the recap of the movie Tin and Tina, released in 2023. In the beginning of the movie, Adolf and Lola stood together in a quaint church, the anticipation of their wedding day radiating from their smiles. Adolf's voice, filled with joy, resonated as he shared, I have chosen names for our children, Lear and Martha. Lola, equally elated, responded, No, those are too common. I prefer names that have no meaning. Their happiness was twofold, as Lola was pregnant, a testament to their blossoming love. But fate can be cruel. And as soon as they exited the church, tragedy struck. Lola began experiencing severe internal bleeding, and Adolf rushed her to the hospital. At the hospital, their world crumbled as they learned of Lola's miscarriage, a heartbreaking loss of their unborn children. Lola was shattered. Her dreams of motherhood were shattered in an instant. Adolf, deeply concerned for his beloved wife, tried to console her, but their happiness had turned into mourning within a single day. Six agonizing months passed, but Lola remained trapped in the grips of her trauma. She was a hollow shell who suffered from the loss of her children before they had a chance to breathe. Adolf, desperate to see her smile again, reassured her, Look at what you've become. I want you to be happy, and I will do anything for your happiness. Lola tentatively suggested returning to their village, seeking solace in familiar surroundings. But Adolf had other plans. He was unwavering in his belief that their home held no darkness. Instead, he revealed the existence of a nearby orphanage. Their decision was to adopt a child and to shower them with all the love they could muster. Lola hesitated at first, wary of this unfamiliar path, but Adolf had made up his mind. He saw adoption as the key to helping Lola heal from her pain, a chance to start over. Their journey led them to an orphanage that housed two siblings, Tin and Tina, seven-year-old children who were talented musicians. The nun at the orphanage introduced Lola to them, and when a lightning strike frightened Tin and Tina, they believed it was a manifestation of God's anger. Lola, empathetic and reassuring, calmed their fears, explaining it was merely a storm. They clung to her, and in that moment, Lola's heart began to open. She decided to adopt Tin and Tina, believing that they were destined to be together. Agolf, initially skeptical due to the children's age and peculiar behavior, relented when he saw the light in Lola's eyes. He understood that these children needed love as much as they needed a family. With that, they adopted Tin and Tina, ushering newfound happiness into Lola's life. Upon returning home, their faithful dog named Cookie barked at the newcomers, unsure of their place. During dinner, Tin and Tina expressed their gratitude for being adopted. They gifted Adolf a crown, dubbing it a wish crown to protect them from the curse of the Pope. The children's insistence on saying grace before eating intrigued Lola, and only after Adolf's prayer did they begin their meal. As Lola observed their belongings, she found their religious fervor unusual for children their age. The next morning, during breakfast, Lola omitted the morning prayer. Curious, Tin and Tina asked why. Tina proposed a peculiar way to see God, promising not to leave a chair no matter what happens. Lola, willing to indulge their innocent curiosity, Agreed. Tina covered Tin's face with a cloth, and he briefly stopped breathing before claiming he had seen God. Lola dismissed this as a childish fantasy. Perplexed but tolerant, days went by, and Tin and Tina faced ridicule from a boy named Pedro at school, who taunted them as Dracula's children. In a bid to empathize with the children, Lola showed them her wooden leg, a relic from a childhood accident that had also claimed her parents. She discussed God and religion with Egolf, who assured her that such zeal was common among the nuns. Later, Tin and Tina initiated a Bible game, which they all enjoyed until the room plunged into darkness. Startled, they covered Lola's mouth with a cloth, and Adolf entered the room. The children claimed that God had arrived. Only Lola's intervention prevented Adolf from enforcing his threat to punish them, and she was terrified. She considered the children a bit eccentric, but not malicious. Tin and Tina apologized to Lola, but Cookie's constant barking unsettled her. She believed the children to be her grandchildren, and her affection blinded her to their peculiarities. The following day, Pedro's harassment at school continued, and the children's obsession with God deepened. One night, they watched a horror movie and decided to give Cookie sleeping pills, believing him to be a transforming werewolf. When Adolf and Lola discovered Cookie's lifeless body, they were devastated but refrained from confronting the children mindful of their innocence. Lola expressed her concerns, wondering if Tin and Tina would harm her too, but Adolf dismissed it as a misunderstanding. He believed the children had a tendency to misinterpret events. Tin and Tina, consumed by guilt, began punishing themselves for Cookie's death. But Lola attempted to teach them that not everything in the Bible should be taken literally. Christmas arrived, 
and Adolf showered Tin and Tina with gifts. Amid the joy, Lola unexpectedly fainted, leading to a hospital visit that revealed the impossible. Lola was pregnant. Stunned, she exclaimed, Now you believe in God. I asked God for a brother, and he gave it. But Lola, ever the realist, cautioned that miracles had reasons, much like a word's multiple meanings. Pedro's mockery persisted, and the children took matters into their own hands to defend themselves. Back home, Lola questioned them, and they twisted the story to protect themselves. A call from Pedro's mother revealed his coma, raising suspicions in Lola's mind. Desperate to uncover the truth, she returned to the orphanage and inquired about the children's interpretations of the Bible and potential violence. The nun misunderstood her query, directing her to find God. Lola stumbled upon Tin and Tina's books at night, discovering a drawing detailing Pedro's condition, which they had caused. She shared this revelation with Adolf, casting blame on the children, but he remained skeptical, doubting her words due to her drinking. Tin and Tina observed silently. Lola packed away all religious items, urging the children to behave normally. In response, they playfully messed up her hair, but Adolf refused to believe they could be responsible. Later, Lola received news of Pedro's passing, which devastated her. She implored Adolf to stay by her side, but he had a flight to catch, promising to spend the entire next day with her. In a sinister twist, Tin and Tina tied up Lola while she slept and tried to feed her a poison drink. Lola resisted, and a struggle ensued. Tina attempted to administer the poison via injection, but Lola escaped in the nick of time. Her wooden leg had been removed, further intensifying her vulnerability. However, when Adolf arrived home, the children assumed their innocent facade once more. In the wake of these events, Lola and Adolf welcomed the biological son into their family, rejoicing in their newfound happiness. Lola, fearing for her child's safety, sought to keep Tin and Tina at bay perceiving them as dangerous. Tragedy struck once again when, seizing an opportunity, Tin and Tina attempted to drown Lola's child in the bathtub. Lola intervened just in time, saving her baby. Living and heartbroken, Lola confronted Adolf about the children's actions, accusing them of killing their child. In a fit of anger, Adolf burned their religious books, and Tin and Tina were promptly returned to the orphanage. For a while, Peace returned to their household, yet Lola couldn't shake her worries about Tin and Tina. Adolf, ever the supportive husband, urged her to focus on their biological child. A month passed, and everything seemed to settle into a new normalcy, but the orphanage held a different interpretation of the nun's words. One day, Lola and Adolf faced an inexplicable apparition on the road home, an eerie presence they couldn't comprehend. Returning home, Lola shared her concerns about Adolf's parenting, fearing he wasn't a good father. Adolf, Determined to prove himself, promised to change. As he tinkered with the TV, an accident led to his being electrocuted, setting him ablaze. Lola rushed to save their child but couldn't find him. In a panic, she followed Tin and Tina's earlier pattern, covering her face with a cloth and praying for guidance. Her child was revealed, but she remained unaware of the ominous message left on the wall. Confused and distraught, Lola confided in the nun about Tin and Tina's actions. However, the nun insisted that the children had been at the orphanage all day, casting doubt on Lola's understanding of God's will. In the end, it became clear that the children were innocent, and Lola's faith in God was reaffirmed. The movie concluded with the three of them, Lola, Tin, and Tina, attending Adolf's funeral together. And that's the end of this recap. Make sure to subscribe, share, and comment. Remember, your engagement and support keep us motivated. Thanks for staying till the end.